Welcome to Bring Your Own Grief. I'm your host, R. Glenn Kelly, and today we're going to cover a very taboo topic. Support for the grieving man. Now, we're not going to talk so much about the obvious truth that men grieve differently than women. For now, we'll just take that as fact. But when you have time, I encourage you to see my other videos, vidcasts, and podcasts discussing male versus female grief and, and other bereavement topics. They're, they're informative. Hopefully, you'll find them healing. And they can be fun from time to time. And sure, I know using the term versus and male versus female grief makes it sound somewhat adversarial, but it's not. It's just so much easier to say than... I don't know, the opposing grief expressions of men and women. Again, watch my other video sessions when you can and learn about the physical, mental, and emotional differences in sex and gender and how that impacts each of us in our emotional responses to grief and bereavement. For now, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Bring Your Own Grief Network. If you haven't yet, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you like and find value in this video, Hit like and share it with others who are going down the same path of hope and healing as you and I. While this episode deals with male grief and, and helping men understand that we're okay, it's also intended to help women who support a grieving man and, and look for insight into what he might be going through. Now, if the loss is mutual, meaning both of you are going through grief healing together, then understanding and awareness of your partner can help a great deal. No, I am sorry for your loss. and and I applaud you for being here. Now, whenever sex and gender bias grief is discussed, please, please know that I paint with a broad brush. I know that no two people are alike, no two within a sex are alike, nor are two grievers ever alike. Yet, in general, there are traits and behaviorisms which are more typical in each sex. Think of it this way. We all know that in general, men are taller than women. Yet, don't we all know women who are taller than some men? And while the majority of women are more external and empathetic, softer than men, if you will, we all know men who fit into those traits as well, right? But then we come to the fact of asking, is it okay to speak in generalities then? Sure it is. It's okay. And it's, it's actually necessary here, especially when a large majority of any group, male or female, make up the generalities. It sets up the foundation. It sets up a, a beginning to speak. But just realize that, that we're not all going to fit in a nice little basket of responses expected of our sex, but most of us will. And real quick, I, I mentioned sex and gender earlier. Now, gender is actually one variable that can take us out of generality. See, sex refers to our physical traits, such as body parts, shape, reproductive organs, and others. Without medical intervention or, or a sex change operation, sex is basically static throughout life. It never changes. Gender, on the other hand, refers to our, our individual levels of either masculinity or femininity. It's, it's far more fluid. While sex is determined by nature, gender actually takes its cues from both nature and nurture. Our sex is introduced solely by nature, right? At conception, X and Y chromosomes. But both genetics and our environmental influences throughout life or, or nurturing after birth can influence our gender. How were we raised? Who were our mentors? What did they instill in us? What are our early experiences? That's unique and variable for each of us. And any man or woman can exist anywhere along a broad spectrum on the scale of gender, ranging from hyper-masculine or hyper-feminine down to gender neutral and, and even over to mannerisms and behaviorisms that are more typical for the opposite sex. Forgive me, I'm, I'm muddying up the waters here just a bit. We came to discuss grieving men, didn't we? Just know that the majority of grieving men may well fit into the generalities of what we discuss here. And realize that when I spoke before about understanding and awareness, the, the, the probable tendencies in yourself, you have to understand and be aware between you and your partner, they'll go a long way in helping with support and healing. As with many things in life, understanding and awareness are always the key. Now, that said, after a profound loss of a loved one, many men, myself included, will have a tendency to hold back showing emotions of loss. Through both nature and nurture, it's just pre-wired in men. And in the case of loss, we're experiencing emotions that we've, we've either never felt before or we're experiencing it at levels that, that we never ever thought possible. 
Both of these can cause confusion in men. Simply put, we may not understand what's going on inside of ourselves. On the flip side, a woman usually going through the loss or even just supporting a grieving man may not understand what he's going through. And this can lead to difficulties in the healing process. In the case of the mutual loss, it can lead to difficulties in the relationship. And yes, I'm, I'm aware that difficulties can also come from a man's lack of understanding and the emotional needs of a woman, but that's for another vidcast. We're, we're talking about men here. So let's look at some of the things that, that might be observed in a man early on after a profound loss. Just know the following are, are observations that, that come from emotions, really, but they're more behaviors or mannerisms more than anything else. Yet they, they originate from those confusing emotions of grief. In no particular order, one thing you might notice in a man after loss is anger. Anger is common after the death of a loved one. Oftentimes, a, a grieving man may actually be angry at himself or at someone or something felt or perceived as is being responsible for the loss. Following any traumatic event, a man tends to search for blame, doesn't he, or, or fault for, for something that, that was done beyond his control. Controlling things is in our very DNA, so don't be surprised by anger. It's a, a normal, healthy, and expected response to loss. As long as he's not harming himself or others, let him be angry. Anger can be constructive and is actually responsible for some great things that have really added value throughout history. You know, just one example, think about mothers against drunk driving. It was started by someone angry about the death of a loved one and throughout the years has been incredible when it comes to life-saving. But next, no grieving man might become detached. See, when a man has a problem, he has a natural tendency to fix it, right? When he's faced with a problem he can't fix or he can't solve, he might actually shut down somewhat and detach himself from the outside world and, and avoid social contacts with others. And this could lead to another tendency, which is rumination or, or really prolonged reflection where he persistently is thinking about the loss or the circumstances around the loss and how he could have changed or prevented things from happening. See, even if we can't change the outcome of a negative event in life, our brains want to know how it could have been stopped. One important thing to keep in mind here, this can lead to false guilt in a man and false anger. In short, when a reason or, or blame really cannot be found in his mind, then a man will find fault in himself and blame himself for the loss. Something or someone, myself included, had to cause this bad thing. But more on that in other vidcast. Next, watch for moodiness. A grieving man may easily be irritated and annoyed. He, he might overreact to even the smallest of annoyances. And, let me spend a few moments on moodiness here since I've, I've been accused of being rather moody myself. Now, you may not be aware of this, but psychological studies show that men actually experience far more emotions on a daily basis than women. And we go through greater changes in mood than our female counterparts do. We just keep it all bottled up inside, right? We internalize and don't show it. Women, on the other hand, are more external and tend to be more outwardly expressive with their emotions. Still having a tough time wrapping your head around the fact that men are more emotional than women? <laughs> hey, listen, think about toddlers for a moment, right? Little boys here in particular, between the ages of, say, two and seven. The ones I've witnessed, myself included, were far more emotional than little girls at the same age. Remember? Temper tantrums, breath holding, foot stomping. I've, I've seen it all. You've seen it too. Little boys can be tough. Little girls, on the other hand, seem to be calmer and not as demonstrative in those early years. So what happens with highly emotional little boys after the age of seven or so? Do boys stop showing emotions on the outside because of nature? Maybe something from our distant past uh, lying dormant in our DNA, which, which switches at a certain age to throttle our emotions back? Or is it nurture? Something from our fathers and our role models who teach us that big boys don't cry. After all, typical grief emotions such as fear and confusion, sadness, crying, simply not associated with masculinity in today's society, are they? It's something I cover more in depth in other video sessions on male versus female grief, but I did want to add some cautions. Repressed emotions can negatively impact the physical health of a man. This automatic repression we have can cause prolonged anxiety, which can exhaust the body as well as the mind. You know, without going into great detail, think of the word disease. Break down that word. Dis-ease. 
not at ease. When the body and mind are not at ease, ill health can easily follow. So listen, regardless, something else to consider is that the grieving man may witness his female partner, his wife, mother, or sister expressing their emotions of the loss more outwardly than he is, leading him to wonder if he's not hurting as much as he should be, not grieving correctly, or, or grieving as much as he could be. Me, for example, earlier in my grief journey, I actually thought I, I must not have loved my son as I could because I was not completely incapacitated. You know, I was wrong, of course. I, I love my son unconditionally, but on the other side, this repressed expression of emotions can also cause concern and confusion in the grieving man's partner. Why is he not crying? Why does he not want to talk about it? And like I thought of myself, does he not love the one we lost because he doesn't show his pains like I do? The love is there. The expressions of pain are just different. So listen, keep an eye out for anger. Keep an eye out for detachment, reflection, and moodiness. You may very well see them. Now, let's talk for a moment about more specific ways a man might handle grief from loss. Most men handle the emotions of grief using the same strategies they use in dealing with everything else. Controlling and holding back the painful emotional feelings and relying on internal strengths to keep going. Because of this, men don't respond well to talking about the emotions associated with the loss. Nor will he have a tendency to seek professional help or, or do grief work. To him, this means talking to strangers about his pains and, and being less masculine in front of others. It's something rarely he does with those even close to him already, does he? Obviously, and, and proven by research, <clears throat> avoidance to thinking about the loss is not very helpful, is it? But those who most effectively begin healing are those who could alternate between two distinct coping mechanisms almost automatically. The first mechanism is known as loss-oriented coping, which is simply allowing yourself to think about the loss. The other is restoration-oriented coping, which is focusing on moving forward to a life beyond the loss. Now, fortunately, most men have an inherent tendency to be planners and problem solvers, as we've discussed, right? moving forward already. So restoration-oriented coping can come natural to a grieving man. His instincts tell him he must move forward, but he's not so good at addressing the emotions, is he? These emotions are painful and often filled with sorrow and despair and will literally challenge a man's own sense of masculinity and, and self-identity, or worse yet, to a man be visible to others. So loss-oriented coping does not come so easy for him. But Listen, we all grieve in our own timelines, male and female. A grieving man will usually come to terms with these challenges over time, as, as well as resolving other regrets, guilt, and angers related to the loss. Whether you are the grieving man or you're the supporter of a grieving man, grief healing is hard. How a man processes grief is generally normal and is okay. Now, we'll talk about some things to look for in just a bit, but let me speak here directly to the grieving men, please. But supporters, Please listen as well. Now, as you begin to walk down the path of hope and healing, I want you to consider the following. First, don't look for normal. We all have a normalcy bias instinct inside of our minds. See, when tragedy happens, a defense mechanism in our brain just wants things to go back to the normal way it was before. It's trying to protect us from that shock and intense pain of the event. There are car accident victims that have been found blocks away from the scene when the police arrive only moments later. They weren't trying to get away. Instead, you know, the accident was just so traumatic in their minds, the mind had to find normal, and, and normal meant a stroll down the sidewalk. For you, the painful truth is that things will never be as they were before you lost your loved one, and you will never completely heal from it. There will be healing, and, and you'll move forward to enjoy a life of peace and purpose again, and, and with your loved one with you the whole time. You won't leave them behind. But there will be scars and aches and pains and yearnings and, until you see them again. Listen, next, remember that it is your loss. Experience it in your own way. The pains of grief are unique and individual to each of us. There are no true stages of grief. The way or time in which you express your expressions of emotions may not be what others expect, or what you expect from yourself for that matter. 
The most important step in moving towards healing is honestly allowing the painful emotions of grief to come out. Another point, give yourself time to grieve or not. You know, early in man's grief, there may be a multitude of tasks and duties that need to be done. There might be funeral arrangements to make and financial considerations to modify or too many other responsibilities to list here. It might also be relied upon by family members to provide them emotional support while they're grieving. Don't question your instincts to carry out these tasks. It's what's programmed inside of you. We men are planners, doers, and, and we're action-oriented in our very DNA. Others might say you're only trying to delay the grief healing process, when in fact you aren't. But when the duties are done, and you'll know when they are, you have to allow the grief healing process to begin. Okay, so next point. Watch for self-destructive behavior, please. While I said earlier that experience anger can be normal, keep it in check and make sure you do nothing to harm yourself or others. Listen, what you perceive as fault or blame early on, many times will turn out to be wrong. and only create a bad rush to judgment and, and false anger. And if you find yourself increasing your alcohol consumption or begin to use illegal drugs or even prescription drugs beyond instructions, seek help fast. You are still here, and that dear loved one you lost would not want you to waste your life. But enough on that. On to the next point. Men, practice patience with yourself and others. You'll experience confusion, fear, hurt, and so many other emotions. And all of this brings anxiety and anxiety brings out a shortness in you, and even an anger in you towards others from actions that we normally let slide by, right? Try not to verbally harm anyone, even those who seem insensitive or, dare I say, stupid. Be patient with them. They really mean you no malice. You know, mostly what I'm referring to here are those well-wishers you'll frequently encounter early on after the loss. There's a a laundry list of things that they'll say that come off as hurtful or insensitive, such as, she's in a better place now, or at least he didn't suffer. You can always marry again, or even something as painful as, oh, you're young, you can still have other children. Yeah, these are people you wanna walk up and just punch in the forehead and walk away from, right? I, I understand that, but, but be patient. They truly have no malice in their hearts. The average person has no training in what to say, like. Like most of us, they were probably raised that when someone hurts, we're supposed to come to their aid by saying something comforting. But they usually have no idea or experience for that matter in, in what those comforting words are. Instincts to comfort kick in, the mouth opens up, and, and out comes something you can usually take as insulting. Just remember, rarely are there insensitive comments meant to be callous. Okay, another thing to watch out for. Many others will not know of your pain. Remember, while you hurt inside, those that aren't close to you have no idea that you've lost someone, yet somehow you'll almost expect that they do. It's one of those odd mind games in grief. There'll be times when you feel like you're wearing what I call a grief coat. You're around strangers in the store or with a customer at work. They have no idea of your pains. They have no idea of your loss, but like a coat you would wear, you think all the others can see the pain wrapped around you. That means they owe you patience. They owe you understanding. They should give you a break in every way. Yet they have no idea of your pains. And try to be patient and understanding, especially for others who are just learning about your loss. If they're just hearing about this in front of you, they're going to become uncomfortable immediately. And they aren't going to know how to act. Again, practice patience. And here's a big one, guys, and, and tough on us all. Know when you need to seek help. For most grieving men, psychological counseling can be helpful, but honestly, we have some program trait in our manhood that makes that a difficult decision, right? It is what it is. However, if you experience serious thoughts of suicide or harming yourself or others, or you develop that alcohol or drug problem I touched on earlier, I implore you to seek professional help right away. So that was some experienced advice from my fellow grieving men. But there are those listening who are supporting a grieving man, right? This means you're either mutually grieving the loss with him, which means you're going through your own grief healing, or you're a dear friend or partner who is brave enough to back your friend. Either way, I salute you both for wanting to learn more about it. Most people 
don't seek any training for this in advance, and unless you've been through it in the past yourself. It can be incredibly difficult. So to help you out, here are just a few tips that I want to share with you as a supporter of a grieving man. First and foremost, prepare yourself. If a grieving man is able to express his feelings, be prepared to experience and feel pain, anger, sorrow, longing, and a number of other intense emotions yourself. You probably aren't used to dealing with emotions on this level in yourself or now in someone you know and care about. You will feel his pains too, and that can be mentally and physically exhausting. Make sure you're sleeping and eating well. You need your strength for this incredible thing that you're doing. Further, consider that a grieving man may not appear to be grateful for all that you do for him. If you do things in support, even obvious things, please don't be surprised or offended if you're not praised or, or even thanked for doing so because his mind is simply somewhere else. Supporting someone in the depths of grief can sometimes be thankless, but no, you are appreciated. He would, he would certainly do the same thing for you. Next, be there. Something as simple as knowing a friend is there is incredibly helpful to him, especially if you're there in person whenever possible. If not, don't take it for granted that he knows simply by using the words, I'm here for you, man. Instead, without making it about his loss, stop by more frequently. If it has to be more phone calls, instead, let him know during the call when you're coming by next. Don't ask him if you can come by. Tell him you're coming. If he really doesn't want the company, let him tell you. Many times a grieving man is concerned that his friends might slowly back away and treat him differently because of the loss. And if he sees you more than before the loss, it's helping him more than you'll ever know. Another good tip, listen. You know, there's an old good saying out there that, that you're given two ears and only one mouth for a reason, to listen. A grieving man may or may not want to talk about the loss or his pains, but if he does, please listen openly. Generally, the less you talk, the better. And as tough as it is, avoid giving advice or problem solving about the loss unless he asks. And, and even then, try to allow the griever to work through it on his own as much as possible. And along those same lines, the next tip is tell the truth always. Never say anything that's not true just to spare the griever's feelings. Don't tell him he's doing fine when you know he's not. If you do, you might try to avoid reality with him, which, which will only slow his healing. And I've said on that, we all tell the truth, right? And here's a great tip. Anticipate, don't ask. Never say, is there anything I can do? Instead, if you know of a way that will help and support him, do it without asking, especially early in the bereavement when he's trying to handle funeral arrangements and such, as well as throughout his early grief. If you notice his lawn needs mowing, do it for him. If you overhear him speak of returning a video to the store or a package to the post office, jump in and do it without him asking. Again, this is important in early grief. Anticipate, don't ask. A man will rarely ask for help nor will he take you up on the line that we all use. Is there anything I can do? You let me know. Trust me, just avoid that phrase altogether, please. Lastly, allow him to grieve in his own way. There is no timetable for a man's grief and no fabled five stages of grief when you have lost a loved one. If you've ever heard of that five stages of grief model, just know that it was not originally meant for when a loved one dies. It was originally created for the terminally ill those who went through observed stages they neared unpreventable death. Just so you know, the five stages of grief model consists of number one, denial, two, anger, three, bargaining, four, depression, and five, acceptance. Someone who has experienced the death of a loved one will go through so many more stages or phases or whatever you want to call them. A griever will probably go through the five stages, but not in any order, and certainly not in a prescribed timeline. Heck, they might go through the five stages of grief every morning before nine o'clock and, and many other stages after that. Listen, unless they're harming themselves or others, let them grieve in their own manner. Oh, but that brings up a final, final tip I want to get in. Know when to ask for help. I know I spoke of this early in a segment on this video, but it never hurts to repeat. Many grieving men will avoid professional help. But please, if he threatens or attempts suicide, harms or threatens to harm himself or others or develops an alcohol or drug problem, 
You tactfully but aggressively guide him towards professional care immediately. What is tactful but aggressive? You're his friend. I'm sure you can figure that out, right? <laughs> hey, so listen, that's it for now. There are additional videos and vidcasts I've produced on how men and women differ in processing and expressing grief. I hope you look at them or, or tune in when they come out. Also, I'd like to remind you, if you have not, please subscribe to the BYOG YouTube channel and like this video. Share it, if you will. For those interested in more information immediately, I recommend my grief and bereavement support books. Sometimes I cry in the shower. The Grief Case and Grief Healings 365. All are available in paperback and ebook at Amazon and Barnes and Noble or paperback at bookstores everywhere. If they don't carry them, ask them to order them for you and tell them to order more for the shelves, please. So listen, that's it for this session. Thank you for joining me here at the BYOG Network, the place where you can bring your own thoughts, bring your own pains, bring your own unique emotions, and bring your own grief. I am R. Glenn Kelly. May you find peace and purpose. <laughs>